have an integer a, okay? What we know, what you probably recall from your uh, previous studies, really at the school level, so it's not university education, it's really at probably even at the elementary school, there is this very simple rule. If you want to verify if a given number, if a given integer is divisible by nine, okay, it's, it's sometimes called the rule of nine, you typically take the digits of the number that you are considering, okay? So imagine that you are taking 12, okay? If your integer is 12, the rule tells you that if you sum the digits and the sum of the digits of 12 is three, one plus two, if this number is divisible by nine, and in this case, we, we are implicitly saying that the remainder needs to be a zero, okay? If this is the case, then the number is a number that you can divide by nine. Now, it is clear that if I take 12, one plus, three, uh, plus two is three, and three is not divisible by nine. So I cannot get a number with a remainder equal to, to zero. If I take, for example, 18, 18 is divisible by nine, we clearly know that it's nine times two, but if you apply the rule that we are considering, one plus eight is equal to nine, and nine is divisible by nine. We get one, and remainder equal to zero. Now, this is the rule. So if I want to know if my integer a is divisible by nine, I can take the sum of the digits of a, and if the sum of the digits of a is divisible by nine, then a is divisible by nine. The question is, can we prove that? Because one thing is that we know the rule, but the question is, can we actually prove that this is true? Uh, is there a way we can simply prove this? Uh, yeah, and it's a quite uh, typical way of proving the results that involve the sum of the digits of a given number. For example, is the same rule that you can use for uh, verifying divisibility by other numbers like three, like 11, and so on. So this is the, the way in which it works. Now we have our integer, okay? Now our, in, our integer can be expressed as follows. So imagine that our integer has n digits. It's a generic n. So I have my integer and I can write my integer in this way. A coefficient a n that multiplies 10 to the power n plus a coefficient a n minus one multiply 10 to the power n minus one and so on. So all the sum of these different elements until I reach a one times 10 and a zero times 10 to the power zero, which is one, okay? Um, so for example, if I take the number one, uh, 123, so one, two, three, I can write this as one multiplying 100 plus two multiplying 10 plus three multiplying 10 to the power zero, which is one, so plus three. Okay, so I can write this number one, 123 as 100 plus 20 plus three. This is what we are doing. Now, the statement of the rule of nine is that if I sum the different coefficients ai for i from zero to n, this is equal to a number n b, where b is an integer, because we need b to be an integer, otherwise n b is not divisible by nine, according to the fact that we don't want a remainder. So if this is the case, so if the sum of ai from zero to n is equal to a quantity nb, where b is an integer, then we state that the integer a is divisible by nine. Now, what we can do, and this is the typical, the typical trick, is to define a new quantity x, which is nothing more than a, the integer we want to prove that is divisible by nine, minus the sum of the coefficients, so the sum of the different ai for i from zero to n. Now, we just stated that this sum is equal to 
9 times b. So what we have is that x is equal to a minus the sum of all the different ai's, which is equal to a minus mb. Now, why is this clever? Because if we do this, we can immediately see that the quantity x can be rewritten in another way. So if I take a and I have the different elements ai, what do I have? I can collect, remember that a is equal to a n 10 to the power n, a n minus one, 10 to the power n minus one, and so on. So I can write a explicitly in that way by taking the different digits. If I remove the sum of a i from zero to n, I can collect these two elements in a way that x is equal to a n multiplying 10 to the power n. This is the part that comes from a minus one, because remember that we are removing the sum of the different a i plus a n minus one multiply 10 to the power n minus one minus one, because in the sum of a i from zero to n, I also have the term a n minus one and so on until I reach the last element, which is a zero multiplied by 10 to the power zero, which is one. So a zero minus a zero, which is the last term in the summation that goes from zero to n. Okay, so this is, that summation includes a n plus a n minus one plus a n minus two until uh, a zero or in the other sense, I mean, you can commute as you want. But we can rewrite x in this way. Why is this the clever way of proceeding? Because then I know the following. I know that every single element 10 to the power k minus one is divisible by nine, okay? Because if I take 10 set k equal to one, okay? If I say k equal to one, I may, I'm considering 10 to the power one, which is 10 minus one nine, and nine is trivially divisible by nine. If I set k equal to two, what do I have? I have 10 to the power 200 minus one, 99, and 99 is trivially divisible by nine. If I take k equal to three, I have 1000 minus one, 999, which is divisible by nine, and so on. So all the terms that I can write as 10 to the power k minus one are divisible by nine for the different values of k. But what I'm saying is that also the sum of the elements uh, ai is divisible by, uh, by nine because it's, it has been written as n times b, okay? But if I take this, so if I have a quantity that is divisible by nine, which is X, I have a quantity NB, which is divisible by nine, because this is what I'm stating. If I sum two quantities that are divisible by nine, then the sum is divisible by nine. So since I can always write, given the way in which I sketched the solution, A equal to X plus nine times B, x is divisible by nine, n times b is divisible by nine trivially, their sum is divisible by nine. So what we have is that we have proven that if I take an integer such that the sum of the digits is divisible by nine, then the integer itself is divisible by nine. <laughs>